my name's Bob Whipler, and this is my family. And from Bowman and Ram, North Dakota, we'd like to say good morning, America. I'm Steve Fox on the back roads of North Dakota. Ever been to North Dakota? Not many people have, but we're going to visit some points of special interest, including the birthplace of North Dakota's most famous native son. And to give you a hint, it's a wonderful, a wonderful place. That's coming up on Good Morning America. It's 745. Just when our intrepid backroads traveler Steve Fox thought he had left no state unturned on the American landscape, surprise. As he tells us, North Dakota, a fairly good-sized piece of America, relatively few of us ever get to, is actually full of surprises. North Dakota is defined by empty roads and wide open spaces, most of them being cultivated. This is the most agricultural state in the nation. Slightly more than half the population is rural. 25% still live on ranches or farms. And the biggest crop is wheat, which is why every small town is dominated by its grain elevator. Called prairie skyscrapers, they are almost always the largest structures for miles and miles. Agricultural temples holding the riches of the land. To tell you the truth, one of the reasons I wanted to do this story is because I realized not all that long ago that with all the traveling I've done for Good Morning America over the years, around the country, around the world for that matter, North Dakota is the only state I've never been to. And now the list is complete. And I'm pleased to report that I've learned that North Dakota is the proud home of, among other things, ostrich farms, Jack's famous borscht, and of course, champagne music. <laughs> To get to our first stop, you literally have to leave the beaten path outside the town of Strasburg and travel a couple of miles down a gravel road to the boyhood home of Lawrence Welk. Born in 1903 in a farmhouse originally made of sod bricks, Welk was one of eight children whose parents emigrated from the Ukraine in the late 1800s and homesteaded the land. For them, it was probably a way of life. But when I look back now and see what they had to work with, it, to me, it seemed like it was horrible. Tough. Tough, very tough. Welk left home on his 21st birthday, unable to speak English. German was the dominant local language, but toting the accordion bought for him by his father, Ludwig. Eventually, he became famous. We bring you the Lawrence Welk Show. His show appeared on network television for 27 years and is still carried on 200 Prairie Public TV stations today. He played the type of music that people wanted to hear. Among the 5,000 people who will visit the Welk Homestead this year are the Pratts from Gardner, North Dakota. We used to watch every week, and I taught my three daughters how to dance with Lars Welk uh, standing on my feet. Can you hold Yes, I can. <laughs> can I see? <laughs> it's said that no state is closer to its pioneer roots than North Dakota. There are people alive today who knew personally the settlers who tamed the land. Many were Eastern European immigrants from Germany, Russia, and the Ukraine. In the town of Dickinson, at Jack's Restaurant, you can enjoy delicious evidence of the pioneers' culinary legacy. <laughs> this is borscht. It has been the most popular menu item at Jack's for the past 23 years. They sell 300 servings a day. I make borscht myself, so I appreciate good borscht. It has just the right balance. Jack Wandler and his wife Carrie make the borscht themselves, fresh every morning. It is basically a beet soup based on a family recipe brought from the old world. I actually started from my mother's mother. They had 15 or 16 kids in their family. That was their main meal, was usually borscht and a loaf of bread. People ask you for the recipe all the time. All the time. Okay. And you tell them no. That's right. We told them no. So you're not going to tell me the secret? That's right. I'm we not... came all the way from New York, and you're not going to tell me the secret? Uh, that's right. <laughs> In North Dakota, livestock usually means cattle. On the Whiffler Ranch outside the town of Bowman, it means ostriches as well. What started out as a novelty eight years ago has become the ranch's main source of revenue. They sell $400,000 worth of ostriches a year, mainly to other ranchers who want to get into the breeding business. As opposed to, say, cattle, these, these critters have personalities? Yeah, every one of these. Uh, you get around a group of ostrich and they get used to you, you can pick out a personality in every one of them. Anything shiny, like a watch or something, uh, generally they, they want to take a look at that. 
Readers hope that ostrich meat, low in fat, calories, and cholesterol, will eventually become as popular in the U.S. as it already is in Europe. Someday, they'll be as common in the grocery stores, supermarkets, as beef. The average breeding pair will produce 25 chicks a year, starting with eggs that weigh about four pounds. How long will it take for this guy to get to be eight feet tall? Oh, it shouldn't take him much more than seven and a half months. No. When this guy's breeding age, depending on whether he's a male or a female, he's going to average somewhere between 350 and 450 pounds. That's a big bird. Yeah. It seems to me that this story is all about hope. Hope for a good harvest. Hope for a growing herd and a bigger market. Hope that an old family recipe will remain secret and successful. And the hope of a young man who used his music to leave the family farm and entertain the world.